Well, it's fantastic to be live here at MWC 23. Amazing atmosphere, as you can see already, live from the Ericsson booth. And for Monica and I, it's almost like once, twice in two weeks, yeah. isn't it, really? Yeah, absolutely. So, BAFTA, pre-MWC kind of news event, and now obviously here live in Barcelona. Monica, the only thing does hope, maybe to set the scene, your role at Ericsson. Perhaps we can just discuss a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. Wonderful. Thank you, Sally. So, uh, I'm Monica Setsam, and I'm responsible for the core networks portfolio within Ericsson. Awesome. Wonderful. And maybe we can draw on the event last week at BAFTA. Fantastic news around all things 5G core and really the role of hybrid cloud and bringing these two elements together. Perhaps we can explore what you're doing in this space, the innovation there and why this matters so much. Head and moving beyond 5G native, for example. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. Perfect. So, you know, for, for us, 5G core is front and centre, right? And, and that's what we're really supporting all the, the service providers. We have, until now, I think 18 networks that are already live, cloud native, you know, on the S8. Uh, a lot of these now are uh, deployed using the Ericsson uh, cloud stack. I would say 80% of our customers have chosen to do that with the Ericsson NFEI or our bare metal CNIS. Uh, I think, and we will continue to support this. Brilliant. However, of course, we also see that there's an opportunity where our customers do want to leverage more of what the hyperstaters can bring to absolutely as well. So that's what we mean with a hybrid. It's really how. How can you leverage the on-prem deployments that you have with an in-house stack together with the hyperscalers, either on-prem or the public cloud? Absolutely. I mean, I speak to a lot of organizations in this space, and that really is delivering on that need for flexibility, for interoperability, and really giving that choice and supporting that, that, that choice as well. So perhaps we can drill into that a little bit more. So from a CSB perspective, what would you say the main benefits of this are? And then we can look at the hyper cloud providers as well. Yeah. You know, so I would say what they find in this and what we think is, is in with the proposition, right, is we have the scalability and, you know, the performance of the 5G core applications for Ericsson. Uh, you have also the scalability uh, and the economy of scale that you have from the, uh, from the hybrid cloud providers. Absolutely. And I would say a couple of things that our customers are looking for. Uh, one, I think, uh, you know, they do see the benefit with a uh, cloud that is really multi, sin support multi applications from different vendors. I think that has a good purpose. Absolutely. Uh, and I think there's a lot of interest in using the, for the automation piece and using, I would say that the whole ecosystem of tooling that you get uh, in many of the hyperscalers provide as well to the table. And I think when you combine these, I think this becomes a very interesting proposition. Perhaps, I mean, draws off MWC 22 as well. I think one of the, the kind of recurring themes there with the power of coming together, wasn't it? Yeah. And I think this year, Velocity enable that. It really is the power of partnership and ecosystem and bringing those complementary strengths, particularly on the technical side as well. So on the hyper cloud, uh, sorry, hyperscaler cloud provider point of view, how are they supporting you on the technical side of things, particularly around the infrastructure? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a very good question, and I think this is where it's, uh, what I think you know, also from a what we want to achieve is common. Like we do both want to have scalability. We want to make sure that it's not you know unique solutions uh, here and there. So what we're working together with them is we're bringing our know-how of what's needed in in order to create the right performance for telco applications. Like we have a high performance user plane yep. that cannot just run on a public cloud today. You would need to do just uh, modifications in order to make sure you can actually support what's needed. Those are the elements I would think we bring that uh, insights. They of course then bring the insights from their side of how what's needed to adapt into the cloud in order to make this work. And I think what we have done, what I think is important, we have really created a reference design Fantastic. that is common across all the hyperscalers, which means also for our customers' per perspective, uh, they really have the freedom of choice, you know, which one do they want to work with? It shouldn't make a difference, you know, they can still run the applications. And here, I think they have really bought into this approach for so which should be done. And I think that's why it's, uh, I think also now demonstrated the absolutely full. Definitely, definitely. I think that's a great point as well. I mean, so many organizations are dealing with complexity. Yeah. They've got all these different vectors of change. So if you're dealing with different partners, you want that consistency. It, and it does empower that choice and it makes it all equal. So I love that. It really makes it bespoke. And perhaps we can drill onto some of the use cases as well. So bringing all this together and really bring it to life for people. What benefits will people start to see? So it's the CSB point of view. We've got the HCP as well, but also from the consumer end. Yeah. What sort of innovation use cases is this going to bring to life? Yeah, take. Yeah, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a mix there. You have the more uh, end user perspective where you see, yeah, we, we're demonstrating here today, you know, really is a man, you know, you know, what are the ways we can actually bring the cloud to the edge and have these really low latency type of applications. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think there's another set of applications that where I think really the public cloud is of key interest is also, and you know, 
disaster uh, coverage. Yes. You know, we talk about, you know, sustainability being a uh, one for energy, but also because of right now we're also seeing absolutely impacts in, uh, you know, in nature, flooding, all the kind of events. Cool. Can you have moments of temporary uh, offload of traffic? I think these are other, I would say, scenarios where yeah. you just want to use the public cloud. It could also be just for maintenance of absolutely. Standard infrastructure date where this will also bring, you know, uh, benefits in terms of use cases. So I think there's some mixed. Absolutely. I love the fact as well. Some of those use cases are incredibly near term as well. So we're not talking a long way down the line. There's things we're going to see applied very soon. That's brilliant. Maybe before I'm going to pivot in a minute, there's something behind me that I'm going to have to, everybody knows I'm going to have to go to sustainability in a minute. But before we do that, I'd love to bring this together and just talk about kind of the work that Ericsson's done around this. I think there is a real clear leadership here. Perhaps we could kind of talk about that as well to bring to life how the difference that you're bringing to this market at the moment. Yeah. So I think the proof is probably what that we can demonstrate now that we're all, all of this is done together with customers. Yes. Right. So we have demos. We were showing what we're doing together with. Uh, Deutsche Telekom with oh, geez, with, uh, with with Google, what we're doing together with Swisscom and AWS, and of course also what we're doing with Microsoft and AT&T. So in all of this, I think what we've seen is they see how we bring our so, you know market leading 5G core applications together with the capabilities they bring with their cloud. I think that's really the the, the key elements of, of the, how you do it commercially. It is not about what do you do in the labs, exactly. but it's really bringing our experience for how to bring big cloud native five to core networks uh, yes. commercial, and now adding then the hyperscaler into that. Absolutely, I would totally agree with that. I think it is that by demonstration point of this because quite often you see like intention and statements around making changes. But the beauty of this is that coming together, there is the intention, but you got true axialization at scale around this too, which is wonderful. And it allows me to pivot slightly because I think we've got time for a couple of bonus questions. So I wonder if we can look behind us here because yeah. we've also got the link here between 5G Corp, one of the benefits Monica mentioned there around sustainability too. I wonder if we could just show a little bit of this to the audience yeah. as well, or at least bring out some highlights. Yeah, so I think what, we, you know, and, and as it happens, right, we have, you know, two key topics, I think, you know, for our Absolutely, right, absolutely. The hybrid, hybrid cloud, which we have, yes. Here. But I would say energy efficiency in the thing about how can we actually make sure that we use less energy, right? And even even in the core, even though I do most focus is on the RAN, but even in the yes. core, of course, we need to contribute our part. Absolutely. So here we're demonstrating what we're doing to, today for it related to our user plane. Find it to bring down energy consumption. So we have a, a number of different features working with our partners as well, how to use the CPUs in a more effective way. So we have like frequency scaling, we have as well the uh, microsleep. So in with this, we can actually, when the CPUs in the user plane are not needed and used to the maximum, we can basically bring them to sleep. And depending a bit on what traffic situation you're in, we can see as much as 70% saving of energy in these use cases. So it is such. I, all of this, you know, diff, we're adding different elements, but over time, so I think this is yes. super important. I love it. I love it. And I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge differential. That really is. I think, you know, the, the global energy crisis we've got at the moment as well, but also the links between things like energy security, resilience and sustainability. We're bringing together some very important topics here as well. But 70 percent, I mean, that really is actualization, isn't it? That, that's yeah. huge. And I think it also brings to the fore what we're seeing around sustainability as well. We're really seeing this embedded kind of from the architecture, from the network up for results. It's hugely important. It's the catalyst to so many changes in many sectors of verticals, isn't it? It really is. For sure. It's fantastic. And did you not get an award the other day as well? There's going to be celebrated here this week around Ericsson as a sustainability. Yeah, I think in general what Ericsson is doing on sustainability, I mean, it's a top of the agenda. Absolutely. Uh, also across, of course, our partners, what we're doing in the, on the network side with our radio, yes. collective radio and with cores. So I think we're very proud of what we have achieved, but in a wheel. We'll keep try, always trying to improve and absolutely this area. It's so important that incremental improvement all the way and that commitment to it and transparency around it is the way forward, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. So it's not the point that it's there immediately. It's more about how do you make it more sus even <laughs> yeah, development sustainable. Absolutely. And the things it's always absolutely. part of what our requirements and when we break. Exactly. I think people understand, you know, whether it's consumers or ecosystem partners, these are messy challenges. They're very interconnected. And they are challenging by design, aren't they? So the transparency around that, nobody, I think, expects things to be fixed overnight. But it's having that constant update, Excellent. transparency, commitment and accountability that makes a difference. I know we're getting short on time, but <laughs> we spoke before, remember at BAFTA, around uh, visibility of role models in tech series. Yes. I wonder, just a final little question, 
if we could do maybe a nugget of advice for anybody watching this now, you know, whether you're a young person at school or maybe an older adult that's looking to upskill or reskill. Why is tech a great place to be? It could be telco, it could be cloud, it could be 5G. It could be any of these areas. I mean, it's such a dynamic space, isn't it? It's incredible. But maybe a top tip we could share would be a lovely way to end it today. Okay, yeah, sure. Now, I think for me is if you want, if you like to solve problems, yes, you know, this is a perfect Absolutely. to be Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. For me, I was not an hint of tech initially, but I always loved problem solving. Absolutely. And here you get more complex problems. Yep. Every day is a new problem and you get to meet, you work with a lot of smart people in order to address this. And in addition, you do it for a very good cause. I mean, the real whole technology for good and what we just talked about. So we're trying to use the thing. Now, if you add all of those together, I think this is just the best place to be. Totally echo that. And I would say, don't just invest in tech skills training. And a lot of that is freely available now as well. But also STEAM skills training. So empathy, emotional intelligence, that confidence to connect as well. So we'll share some resources. There's Connect to Learn at Ericsson. And there's some things from my non-for-profit as well. So we'll share those too. So yeah, get involved. It's a great place to be. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure.